All right guys, so in this video, I'm just going off the top of my head on this one, just to create a 303 acid style sound. So the acid sound is obviously from the original 303 machine. So we're trying to emulate that machine. So the first thing we're gonna do is I've got a saw wave here and I'll start off with that. I've got a MIDI pattern here, which is just this one here. And what I've done is I've cut the notes off a little bit there and put some longer notes in and some short notes and some higher notes there to give the pattern some variation. So if I play that through, this is what it sounds like as an initialized patch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go on to envelope one and leave it as it is. I'm going to keep this nice and simple so you can just follow along. Then we've got envelope two. I'm just going to shorten that, take it right down there, keep it nice and short. And I'm also going to bring it down a little bit there. Then I will activate the filter and I'll put it on a low, low pass filter there. And so that's all we've got so far, just a muffled sound. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that through. And already we're getting that sort of 303 acid sound because we've reduced the envelope down to quite a pluck really. So that's the thinking behind that. And then as we bring the filter in, we start creating and sculpting our 303 sound. So play that through. And as I'm playing it through, I'm listening. Where the sort of sweet spot is. So now I'll go on to envelope two and I'll take that and put it on the cutoff and I'll play that through and just keep listening to it. You're always listening to the sound. Quite like it there. A bit of variation there, so that's good. Then I'm gonna take the resonance up. So a little peak there. Already we're getting that really good 303 sound come through. Might take that to about 11 o'clock. So what do we do when we're making 303 live jamming? So in a real studio setup session, we'd be tweaking the knobs as we go to create some variation. So I'm going to emulate that by putting an LFO on the cutoff and this will simulate us playing with knobs basically. So what I'll do, I'll go on to find myself a sine wave LFO and I'll assign that to the cutoff wheel to simulate us playing with it. And if I play it now, it will sound a bit weird because it's uh, on quarter rate there. So I'll take the rate down to about uh, one bar. And I've got my resonance. I can play, just keep playing with the resonance and the cutoff to find your sweet spot. So I quite like it there. So now what we've got to do is emulate the 303 analog engine. So I'll go on to effects and I'll go to distortion and I will go down to, let's say stomp box. You can put through any of the sort of analog sounding distortions and I'll turn the drive right up. We're really starting to get that 303 sound come through there now. I might take that down a bit and just keep playing with the cutoff and the resonance. So you might like it nice and plucky. You might want it um, a little bit more decay on it. Again, we could also put the LFO on the decay there to lengthen our notes and have some randomness with our notes there. So I'll take that LFO, put it on the decay, but I won't go too mad with it. So another thing we could do is layer this sound up a bit by adding a sub oscillator. So if I click that on, I'll take the level down a bit and then play that through and just listen again. So 
So at the moment that's not being affected by the filter. So I need to route the sub through the filter and I'll put that on sub. And then I could bring in more bass by increasing the level there and experiment with the different saw shapes. I'll leave that off for now because we're trying to create a basic 303 sound. So I could also route the LFO to the resonance knob. To get that real high pitch sound. So there's our basic 303 sound. And now what I'm going to do is go on to the bandpass filter, which sounds pretty good. So I'm going to bandpass 12. Again, I'm just playing with the knobs there. And because we've got a lot of resonance there already, I'll probably remove the modulators from the resonance and then. As we can see there, I've got these longer notes in to emphasize certain notes. It's all about mixing up the notes and the resonance and the cutoff. So the last part of this sound design would be to put the porter slide on. So if we put that one on and just increase it to say 11 o'clock, we'll get a slide on the longer notes. And then you can literally just have hours of fun playing around with the parameters and coming up with different styles of 303. So another thing we could do to add an effect is add some delay. So from there on, we could experiment with different types of oscillator. So if I go on to the analog, go on to acid, this is a really good one. And if I play that through, Play with the parameters again. One thing we can do with this acid one is actually play with the wavetable position. Get some really nice sounds coming through that. And then we could add some further modulation to that by again adding the LFO to the wavetable position. So the main thing guys is just to experiment with the sound and just keep modulating different parameters and have fun with it really. So I usually keep this envelope one to as it is on the original settings and I'm just using the envelope two to go to the cutoff there. Now I could if I wanted to play that through and reduce the decay on this first envelope but it can sound a little bit too plucky then. <laughs> So I hope that's been useful guys, just to get you started with creating your 303 sounds there. It's all about experimentation from then on and messing around with the low pass and the high pass and the band pass filters.